Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Now, I, this is a subject that I know absolutely nothing about. So tell us a little bit of history okay. and what's happening now. I mean, is it going to continue to be uh, available, available for the people who need it for medical purposes? Well, first thing is a lot of people don't know what's going on with medical marijuana. There's such a bad persona on it that everyone smokes it and it's their potheads and it's just a bad thing. Well, you know what? We've been giving it to children, my son as one of them. Uh, my son's taken 25,000 pills in his life, antipsychotic drugs that are li like really causing him to have a lot of different problems. He couldn't walk. He couldn't talk. He was having um, anxiety attacks. He was going to seizures for an hour and a half, four times a day. I've given him 300 shots of Valium in five years. Um, he's been in the ambulance 45 times, and uh, he had a seizure every day of his life for four and a half years. The first day I gave him medical marijuana was the first day he ever went seizure-free in his life. Um, so you could... So you could tell it did make a big impact on my life. And not just that, there's a lot of other children we've been giving it to now, and every single one of them is going to be getting better. And the pharmaceutical drugs are what's killing our children. Um, I've known there's a lot of five- to seven-year-olds starting to be put into insane asylums, insane asylums, and the doctors are telling their, their parents that their kids are, are uh, bipolar, ADHD, uh, autistic, severely autistic, and we're finding out that it's the medication. Uh, for instance, Respidol. Uh, Respidol has multiple lawsuits against it, and they are they're making not just adults insane, but think about giving it to a child. Um, there's parents that I go to different parent groups uh, with epilepsy, with autism, and I've been to, involved in 10 different foundations that I've been talking to parents, adults that have been on these medications that are literally dying from these medications. You know, if you've noticed that every single corner has been coming up a CVS, a Walgreens, a, a um, any, anything with pharmaceutical. I've even done some research. When I looked uh, looked up today, I had a friend call me that works for um, a builder and said, we have planned 20 more CVSs this year in California. And I was like, wow. I go, that's a lot of CVSs. And he goes to me, yes. He goes, um, he goes we get repaid in three years. I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, they, they repay us $3 million in three years. I said, how do they do that? He goes, in their pharmaceutical drug, the pharmaceutical part of the, of the CVS is paying back their – Paying back the the company that builds it in three years, three million dollars. My home, it, my home was one hundred fifty thousand. I can't, I can't pay it off in thirty years. It's very hard. So that tells you how strong this is. And the young man that was here earlier it was was a really good guy. He had a lot of statistics and facts, and how he was talking about lobbyists. Lobbyists are the ones with the pharmaceutical companies coming in and pushing these drugs, and 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 make it making us think they're miracles. They weren't miracles to my son. I almost lost his life. And I've been very blessed now to find medical marijuana. And now that after I found something, after five years, we've tried 12 different different t different drugs, two from Europe. None of them worked. They only caused a lot more problems. So now, using medical marijuana, my son started running. He started swimming. He started. He can go to school now and, and focus instead of having seizures all day. He used to have 300 to 500 twitches a day. He doesn't have one sometimes for two weeks now. What causes the seizures? He has a sodium channel in the brain. It doesn't distribute sodium correctly. It's a gene mutation. It's called from the SCNA1 gene. Uh, it's called Gervais syndrome. There's only 800 known cases of it, but um, it's changed. The medical marijuana has changed my son's life. It took five years to go through all these medications, and I finally found one. So uh, he was taking 22 pills a day. I got him down to four right now. But getting him off those 18 pills, my son's been having withdrawals. The withdrawals are worse than what you see on t on YouTube of heroin withdrawals or crack withdrawals, and it's that's not fair for a three to three to four year old, five year old, six year old to go through this, um, let alone a human being. Period. And I feel like sometimes we've been taken advantage of that people have been telling us these are these are miracle, use these drugs, use these drugs, and it's been nothing but torturing my son. I have video documentation of my son suffering so bad going through these going through these withdrawals and um, it just kills me to see my son going through this getting off the eighteen pills. But when it talks about medical marijuana, if you could put up that sign that sign I go to I go to protests, um, excuse me. I don't think we can reach it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, that's one of the, I go to protests because right now they're trying to take away the medical marijuana. Before medical marijuana, my son's been in the ambulance 45 times. As you can see, that's what it looked like every time we went in there, if not worse. After medical marijuana, my son started swimming and becoming happy. Before medical marijuana, he could look at a swimming pool and have a seizure. And now he could go swimming for up to an hour or two and be a child. I'm getting my son back, not a zombie. And um, now what was happening is... Um, U.S. Attorney Melinda Hag has been attacking Harborside Health Center in Oakland, and they want to shut it down. And the, and the reason why they shut it, they want to shut it down, is because 
what she says, there's too many customers, there's 108,000 customers. It sounds like they must be doing something right. I don't think there's 108,000 potheads that are just going there to, to be potheads. When you go into this facility, you see every age from age 20 to 80 or 90, you see people in wheelchairs, handicapped people, every nationality, sick, hurt, dying, cancer, and any kind of sickness are going there because they want natural remedy, which a lot of people don't understand. Is the pharmaceutical drugs have a lot of have a lot of side effects, and, and, and no one tells you about that. When they get when they prescribe the drug to you, it's like M and M's. Here, give it to your kid. Everything's going to be okay. Things will get better. No, it got much much worse, and it's just not fair that we've been seeing our kids suffer. And finally, we find something that works, and now the government's trying to take it away from us. You know, <clears throat> we came to America. I'm, I'm a Syrian, as you know. And we, my parents came to America because we were being persecuted for our religion and we didn't have a right there to vote. Well, what makes the difference of coming to a country that where you could vote and they, take, and they tell you, hey, vote, we voted for this in the state of California and now they're taking away our vote saying that they're not, they want to shut down these facilities. And, the, and they've, this, this place, Har Harborside Health Center, has been doing everything illegally. Last year they paid $3.1 million in taxes. They're the second biggest tax, tax, taxpayer to the city of Oakland. <laughs> So why, why are they doing something illegal? The, the Harbors, Harborside has offered the American gover the government to come in and uh, check out their facility and see what they go through, go through all their books and say, look, we do, we're doing it legal. We use it for real medical purposes. Everything gets tested there. So it's not like a street drug. This is getting tested for pesticides, for mold, for, um, for uh, different levels of the THC CBD content. Because I give my son CBD, it's cannabidol, and it's very hard to find right now. Um, been searching for two months, I can't find it. I've been begging for help from people, and it's been stressing me out. I have a two-week supply left, and I cannot find any more. And the more they shut, the last place I got it from was in Santa Barbara, and now I can't find it. And it's been such a hard, stressful time. You think of your kid not getting their meds when you can go to Walgreens and pick it up, but for my kid, it's not like that. And I'm making it a lot harder, and I don't want to see my son suffer again. I don't want to see him in an ambulance again. It just reps my heart out, and that's why I'm fighting for the cause. Because I know it works. I have video proof, and I, not just for my son. It's, there's so many other kids benefiting it from it, from with epilepsy, with autism. But even adults can benefit from other other uses too, like multiple sclerosis. Last time I was on the show, we we're talking about diabetes. We we're talking about arthritis. It, it, there's so many different aspects. It's not just THC, and it's not just by smoking it. There's different ways of taking it. So my six-year-old is not going to smoke a joint. What he's going to do is we're going to give a vegetable glycerin tincture. So we give him a dropper. It's non-psychoactive, so it doesn't have this THC in it. So it has a 20 to 1 ratio of CBD to THC. So it eliminates the THC because CBD and THC are yin and yang. So what it does, it helps the CBD1 CB1 and CB2 receptors in his brain and makes everything flow better. So it seizures are down 80%. The hard part is when he's having withdrawals from the medications. And that's, that's one of the hardest things. And now that we're running out, I have a two-week supply left, I don't know where to get it. Uh, Harborside's been helping us. We've been testing thousands and thousands of plant material, and nothing's coming up with the right percentage of ratio of CBD to THC. So, um, well, What are you going to do? I have no idea what I'm going to do. Um, this week I'll be all over California looking for it. I've been asking for people to help me um, to get some donations so we get more research, get more resources to get it out there. Um, you could follow my, my, uh, my son's life, how it's changed, and you can see the video documentation of my son's life changing on Jason and Jaden's journey on Facebook. But uh, I've been begging for help because I can't let my son go back like that. And it's the sad thing is it's not just my son. How about if we get it and we can help out so many other people? I'm not understanding why it's being taken away when it's such an easy, quick fix. Well, why is it being taken away? I think it's literally um, the lobbyists, that, that, uh, you know, these big, big pharma has a lot of money to, to play with. Like he was saying, the guy that was here earlier, he goes, the lobbyists are there. They're having big parties. They're enjoying it. They're spending millions and millions of dollars. If that's not a sign that he just said that right before I walked in, I mean, I kind of picked that up and I was like, wow. I mean, he's just telling you right there. Yeah, they get to enjoy their lives. They get to go drink and have fun and party while my son's suffering at home, dying in front of my face and, and seeing him cry and, and be in pain and, and ambulance and hospitals. That's no way to have a child grow up in life. I don't know if you want to show the video. Uh, we could probably uh, zoom in on it. I don't, I don't know. We'll, tr we'll try. Okay. Because you showed me that video before the show, and you know Jim was just here a minute ago, holding up and presenting art, and there's nothing like you know a picture is worth a thousand words. So this is what's my happening to my son. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Tilt it forward a little bit. There you go. Is this fair? 
This is my son withdrawing on Clobazam, the antipsychotic they gave my son for the last three years. Is this fair for a kid to go through? And then you have another video of him. This is him half an hour after I gave him the CBD. It's just frustrating seeing it, and you live this every day of your life. It, it's just really frustrating. And I'm crying for help from the government, from anyone to help, because I need to help my son, not just my son, but every other child out there. And it really hurts. I just don't understand why money yeah. is... Half an hour later. Oh, you're dancing now. It's only been, what, half an hour later, 45 minutes later, and you're happy now? What a difference. Why not fight for medical marijuana when it's working and the drugs are killing our children? I just want to post this on, on this uh, Dravet.org and Dravet Serum Foundation just to show the difference of what half an hour can do to a child that's coming off of Clozam when the magic three that were, you know, killing our, my son. What I'm talking about the magic three is these three yeah, drugs that the, these, these different uh, foundations have been pushed on us about Steropentoclobazam and, and uh, Depakote. They, they pushed them on us saying it's a miracle, it's going to save your son's life. That, my son was ODing every day. He's been, at that time, he was in the ambulance, what, four or five, six times a week, um, spending our whole week in ambulances and, and doctors and fighting. I've lost my house, my, my business. I've lost everything in my life. And... Um, I don't even care about that stuff. All I want is my son. That's all I want. I want my son to not suffer. Well, how can we get involved or who do we even talk to well, about no, this? Because like I said, I know nothing about this at all. No one does. And even in the medical marijuana industry, 99.9% .9 of the people don't know what I'm talking about. They don't know about these ratios and percentages. I'm way ahead of everyone else because they don't know. I've done the trial and error with the milligrams per milliliter and figuring it out, giving the drops to my son and doing the trial and error myself to figure out what works for him. So I've been doing the study myself, the own research myself on a human being, not on a mouse, what these, what these pharmaceutical companies do on mice. People don't understand it. They're doing these research on mice, not on human beings. And whatever happens to the human beings, we're pretty much guinea pigs to these, to these companies that are seeing us, okay, 10 people died in one month. Okay, 100,000 people died in one month. You know, last year, 106,000 people died in the United States from pharmaceutical drugs. You know, in the last, in the last 2,000 years, there hasn't been one reported death from overdose from, from marijuana. So there's something wrong there. Um, a lot of people, and th these days, the new epidemic is pharmaceutical drugs. If you look on the streets right now, I mean, you can't find marijuana on the streets anymore. But every corner you go to, not just so you can buy it from the stores, but walk into the store. You can get people approaching you saying, Vikes, Vikes, OCs, OCs. People are selling these prescription drugs on the streets. We're losing our families, our children. Everyone's on drugs. Everyone's, everyone, the whole families. Because once one, one person in the family is on drugs, he makes everyone else go on drugs because everyone else is going insane because they see everyone else, seeing him suffer, everyone else starts suffering. They start using the drugs. And I've seen it re repeatedly, repeatedly. Last week I was at Gervais Syndrome Foundation meeting in um, Gervais, Gervais Syndrome.org meeting in Minnesota. And the parents there were furious because they seen the difference of my son in the videos. And not just they were furious is, is that we don't have the option in other states to use medical cannabis, let alone CBD. No one's doing the research to help us out. And um, it's affecting all these people's children's their lives. I've seen adults that are you know, taking pills because their kids are on pills, and the grandma's taking a pill because her daughter's on pill because of her son being on the pill. And they're all on anti-anxiety, sleeping pills, and you could see in their faces that they're just worn out and just drugged out of their mind. And all the side effects, you could see them like just all like cranked up or itching or, or doing stuff. When the parents were seeing me, they're like, wow, you look healthy, you look good. I said, because I know I don't do any drugs, first thing. And second thing is not just that, look at my son's getting better. I know it's a long process going through these withdrawals, but seeing my son get better, I feel on top of the world. But I'm getting scared now because I'm running out. So I have been begging for donations. I have been begging for help because I'm the one doing the research. No one is helping me. I mean, there is Harborside doing their best, but they've done, tested 2,000 different strains, and they're not finding the, the certain percentage of CBD to THC to break the blood-brain barrier to get into the, to the receptors to help out my son. You mentioned a few minutes ago how we can follow you on Facebook. Give us that information okay. again. So if somebody's out there, they can okay. contact you directly. Yes, I'm on Facebook. Uh, it's on Jason and Jaden's Journey on Facebook. You can follow me on there. You can see how Jaden's life has changed. If you'd like to donate, please give me a call. My phone number is 209 604-8317. I do need any help I can get. Um, it's not just my son. First, I have to take care of my son, but we need to help out everyone. All these kids need to stop suffering and being in pain. We need to make a change.